Welcome back to the Girl Power Alliance podcast. So excited for you to meet my guest today. She's quite accomplished and we're going to have a lot to talk about, but let me tell you a little bit about her. Christy Browning is on a mission to encourage, empower, and inspire others to uncover their purposes and live them out with passion. She's a TEDx speaker, an award-winning writer, and a gifted coach. Christy is seen at motivational events all across the U.S., before COVID, and is sought after by corporations to provide energizing talks packed with practical and tactical how-tos. You can hear her each week as she hosts the live revised podcast found on all the pod, uh, found on all the popular podcast platforms. Christy's live revised mantra has compelled followers to uncover their purpose, live life with passion, embrace new opportunities while fighting to be free from past mistakes, failures, and disappointments. Be warned, Christy will shake you up and leave you motivated to live a bigger, bolder, brighter life. She is originally from Memphis, Tennessee, but calls Indiana home at the moment. She is married with two dogs and two stepchildren. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Michelle. I really appreciate you letting me get to be on here. Oh, letting you get to be, well, we are just honored. And before we even go anywhere, Christy, this podcast is coming out in October and Christy is one of our course contributors. So inside of the Girl Power Alliance membership, um, we have featured one of her courses this month called From Vision to Goals. And it is, let me just tell you, it is packed. Typically inside Girl Power Alliance, we release two courses a month, but Christy's course is so vast that it's the only one we're releasing for the month of October. So um, we're just honored to have you as a part of our community. And I'm excited for uh, maybe people that have never heard of you to, to learn about you and learn from you. And you're just amazing. Oh man, I wish I could just dial you up every morning and have five minutes with you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, let's, can, can we like, can we rewind a little bit? What is like, so tell us, how did you get into what you're doing? Uh, so, uh, I was in prison. That's what did it. Um, I raised in a amazing home with amazing parents, um, church girl, God girl, my whole life and, um, got married really young, got into relationships that weren't healthy that sort of led me into decisions that were equally as unhealthy. And at the age of 30, I found myself sitting in a courtroom being convicted of a felony and spending, uh, getting a two year sentence in the Indiana women's correction facility. Um, never really had gotten in trouble in my life before. Like that was kind of the first go around. Um, and I remember, leaving the courtroom and going into like this little office on the side where they sort of do a lot of paperwork and get you processed. And the lady who was in charge of that was a lady I sang on praise and worship team with at church. Oh, wow. And she is crying and she's like, I don't understand why this is happening. You're such oh. a good person. And I was just in shock. But really the thing is, is that that was a pivotal change for me. And I tell people that the court system may have put me in there for one reason, but God had me there for a whole nother reason. And I was kind of like the Israelites in the old Testament that just was determined to go about it the hardest way possible to get where they needed to be. That was me. And, um, my sort of Babylon moments where they were conquered by the Babylon empire, that was prison for me. Um, where really it was kind of like, you got to wake up, you've got to wake up. I have a purpose for you and you are like Jonah running the opposite direction. And I'm sending you a whale in the form of a prison cell to mm. get you in focus. And so uh, I was there for probably about four or five months before I finally surrendered to that. Wow. I was really, really angry when it all first happened. Um, because going into that whole process, I expected that God would come through for me. I just expected that I could pray enough. I could read enough scripture. I could get prayer warriors. And we all walked through that entire process with faith that God was going to deliver me. And when it didn't happen, I was angry. Yeah. And I thought you had promised to, you know, be my, my refuge. You promised to be my strength. You promised to be a place I could run to. Where mm -hmm. are you now? And I remember at one point feeling the spirit tell me, but you forgot the most important promise that nothing can separate you from my love. Mm. You may walk through some challenges, 
but nothing separating you from my love. And there was that moment of surrender. Um, and I thought, okay, I got about nine months left to be here and I am not leaving here the same person as I was when I came in. So you got nine months, God, whatever you want to do, let's get it done because this is going to be the last time I run this race. Wow. And I really started taking that time to read books that I could get my hands on, pray, journal, read scripture, and just really start to try to peel back years of layers of pain and hurt and mistakes and shame, honestly, um, a lot of approval addiction of wanting to seek people's, you know, approval on stuff, um, to really get to the root of this is why I divinely created Christy. It was for this and let's get okay with that, even though it's going to be different and unique and it may not look like everybody else. Uh, and so I left prison with the concept and the idea that I wanted to be a speaker. I had had some speaking uh, experiences in the past. I had some writing experience in the past, but I just never really stepped into that potential. Uh, and so I thought, well, I got a story to tell now, so <laughs> let's make it happen. And that's kind of what set me on uh, the journey for that. And just over the years, I feel like God's really shown me kind of how to cultivate the message, not for it to just be the shock and awe story about Christy, but that it be a victory story for other people to know that they don't have to be stuck. They don't have to, you know, just ride out the wave. They can make a change. They can revise. They can restructure and redo any aspect of their business, any aspect of their life, if they're willing to do the work and they're willing to let God step in the middle of it. I mean, wow. Thanks for being on the podcast. I'll talk to you later. Like, <laughs> <laughs> There's so much that I want to dive into with you. I mean, I just, okay. So first of all, you're amazing. I already said that, but I want to tell you again, uh, the fact that you literally were incarcerated and it took you five months to, for it to click. That's, I can relate very, very much to so many of the things that you said. I mean, it's kind of funny because I feel like you think we, like we as people think that we would like wake up from whatever. We would see it so much quicker. It just doesn't work like that. Mm, no. Five no. months. That, that's a lot of days. Yeah. And the thing is, is that before that, I could look back and see all the times I had those should have been a wake up call moment, but right. never was. Cause Ugh. that wasn't an overnight leap right. from goody two shoes living, you know, the good little churchy life to now I'm all sudden sitting in prison. I mean, that was a slow fade as you know, they say, and there were so many times that I felt like I was getting the tap on the shoulder. Like you need to turn around. This isn't what I had for you. This isn't right. Uh, and I, I didn't listen. And it really took that drastic thing and five months into that drastic thing for me to finally decide that it wasn't worth the fight anymore. I, I was willing to surrender and yes. go through whatever it took because the pain of going through that uh, process and feeling the shame and feeling the hurt and watching it impact all of my relationships, it just wasn't worth it anymore. So, you know, whatever that was going to mean, I was, I was down for it, whatever he needed to do to me. Um, and it was, it was a journey for sure. And it, and it even was afterwards, you know, being there, uh, is really easy because you're in prison with a bunch of other prison people. So it's super easy. But when you get out all of a sudden, that's where you're going to really test that faith component and who really determines your value uh, and your message. Because now all of a sudden you're in the, in the public where every job application you fill out, you got to check that box. You can't register to vote until that law changed. Uh, you can't own a gun. You have to wait so many years before you can have a passport. So there's all of these restrictions that are on you. Um, and people know your story. They find out, they get your past and they make their judgments and yeah. their conclusions. And so that was the hard part, but it was like God saying, you get to make the choice now, you know, are you really going to step out and live the life I've designed for you? Or are you going to like, have to come back here again? And I thought, no way, no way. Am I coming back here again? Let's make it stick and make it work. It's interesting because Surrender means a different means something different to different people, and um, I've had some pretty big surrender moments, n not quite to the extreme that that you have experienced, but I did get a DUI and had to deal with that. That's something that lasted years. Mm -hmm. um, the repercussions of that. I wrote about it in in my book, 
And um, it was the hardest thing for me to write about because I never talked, literally, e even to this day, I've been podcasting for three years. This is the first time I've ever talked about it on a podcast. So the book wow. was the first time I ever even shared it. Um, but but it's interesting to me because I talked to so many women, worked with women for so many years and they say, oh, okay, God, I surrender. And I, you, from the outside looking in, you're like, you have not surrendered. When, you, when you've experienced real, that, that level of like flat on your face, mm -hmm. it's, I, I give all of it to you, God, surrender. You can recognize in other people when they aren't there yet. And it's different for different people. Some people, they don't have to get the crap beat out of them like that to surrender. I did too. Yeah. It took a lot for me to, but I will tell you, and maybe this is true for you as well. Once you've gone there to that place, which I think is a holy place. Yeah. It is a holy place to be like fully, completely surrendered. But once you've gone there, I find that it's easier to go there again. And I go there much more quickly now because I'm like, okay take it, take it all. I don't ever want to get into a place where not listening to you or hearing you or following you takes me down another path. Yeah, I would totally agree with that. And I think that we know, I think it changes your perspective on your faith because all of a sudden God has a different attribute that you now know personally. Yeah. And, you know, you don't know him as a healer until you're sick. You don't know him as a provider until you need provision. And I don't know him as a redeemer until I was in that moment and only he could redeem. Uh, I was on a, I got to be on a, a ministry tour that brought together all these amazing people who had these incredibly inspiring stories about things that God had done for them. And the majority of them had been some through some sort of tragic situation, but all of them were in a situation that it was kind of like life did it to them, right? Yeah. It wasn't because of their misjudgment. And the name of the tour was called Out of the Ashes. And it was the whole concept of, you know, God can bring you out of the ashes and rebuild a life and so on and so forth. And then I would get up to share my story and I would say, you know, it's one thing when we see ashes around us, things that have crumbled and burned down around our feet. But it is another thing when you are standing there holding the match, when you are the one that did it, you know forgiveness in a whole new level because there was no reason, you know, for that redemption and that forgiveness um, to ever happen for me other than for the fact that God is just so awesome that it's, it's ours. Uh, but man, it does. It makes you just see it differently. It makes you appreciate it differently. And you're real quick to go back to that reservoir and pull out what you need when you need it for sure. It really makes me think of, um, in the Bible with Jesus, with the woman at the well, like, mm -hmm. you know, and I was, I was either listening to something or reading something the other day. It was like, Jesus came, you know, who, who, who would love him more or, or experience him deeper? The person that, you know, just whatever they, their tragedies or their, their trials weren't, weren't very deep or the person who was literally at rock bottom, the woman at the well, she's you know, sleeping with all these men, sleeping with married men, getting called out literally publicly. And he says, like, he wipes her clean. Mm -hmm. Who has a deeper experience? And so I'm not saying, you know, God is God for everybody, but I, but I will say your level of, of trust and your faith, I think grows so exponentially when you have these just like life altering moments where yeah. he shows up so big and it kind of makes me mad about myself that it takes these life altering moments for me to get to those places. And I, I, you know, hopefully this journey for me has been that now it doesn't like, I don't have to be flat to get there now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think though, too, it also helps us realize in the scripture where it says that all things work together for good. You know, I think it helps us realize that he really does know how to pull all together those crazy, you know, things we ran off and did or yeah. things that weren't meant for us, how to weave them back into this beautiful picture that he makes good all of a sudden. And, you know, the, the message I have now is only there because of the mess I went through. Right. Um, and, you know, that is what makes God so great and the redemption so powerful because what was meant to keep me in the pit, not just in that, you know, time I was there, but even beyond that, yes. you know, the enemy meant that to be the thing that would hold me under, but only because of God's amazingness, do I get to now pull out from underneath that and stand on it as a platform to testify of him and his goodness and all that he can do for us.
And he's so good because this thing that happened to you is very personal. It's you, it's your life is now literally helping to free so many, I would venture to say thousands of people as they hear this story and really allow that to seep into them and take personal, you know, things out of it for their own lives. So God is so good like that. It's one of the things I think is so important about sharing your story. Yeah. Um, I, I wrote, one of the things I, I wrote in my book was your truth sets, helps to set other people free because it's like, once they hear, they have all have this picture of you, right? Like they mm -hmm. see you now, your life and your speaker and motivational, you have all these, you know, accolades, TEDx speaker, um, you know, and so they have this picture of who you are and you know, the, but then they hear this story and it gives them permission yeah. to be truthful and honest. And I believe once you do that, once you shine light on that dark place, the enemy no longer can hold it over you. Yes, it is so true. It's so true. You know, it loses its power in that moment. And I've had a lot of women share with me a lot of, you know, sad, trying hard things that they've gone through. And my encouragement always to them is then tell somebody, it doesn't have to look like how I'm doing it, but never have we ever been in a better position to tell our stories. And it doesn't have to be nitty gritty all, you know, airing out the dirty laundry, you know, some sort of a lifetime movie thing. But, you know, people need to know that real believers know a real God who sees our real pain and hurt. And when we dress it up too much and put an Easter bonnet on it and it says all the right things, it doesn't make it real for people. People don't think that they can accept that. And um, I never knew church to the level of church until I stood in a prison uniform wow. in a little church in a prison and watched all kinds of women with all kinds of pain and all kinds of past come and worship God. And it all of a sudden, so many of the trivial things we get hung up on as believers just melt away in that moment because it is, it doesn't matter. And you realize just how big God's love is for us. And it surpasses all of those things that we try to cut off or box in or limit um, because of just our own humanness. But I mean, it is the thing that allows for what was supposed to be my death sentence, be what gives me life, but then others as well. And, and we all have a story like that. We yeah. all have something, you know, that can speak into someone else's heart and their life and let them know that there is hope and there is, you know, a future for them, even beyond what they may have experienced if they're willing to embrace that. It's so, it's such a beautiful thing. And I think that is a very timely message for now. Um, mm -hmm. With all the things that are going on in the world, you, I really see infighting, even in the Christian community with like specifically in church, people are just fighting over things that like, I keep telling people like this, your, your conversation is down here and the conversation needs to go up here. All this mm -hmm. stuff that people argue about it's like none of that actually even matters. This is just what the enemy uses to keep people in bondage, in division, and all these things. We need to take the converse, strip all that away. Like you said, you just yeah. strip all that away. And really it is about the relationship with the one God. Mm -hmm. and, and none of the other stuff actually matters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's so true. It's so true. And it's about being personal too, right? Yes. So if you make it all, I, you know, I call it serving a chalkboard Jesus, where you have to check off all the boxes and like yeah. someone's keeping tally, that, that doesn't mean anything to me. That's not personal for me. But when I can roll up my sleeves and like dive in and be open and transparent and, and know that there's, you know, a God that's going to accept me the way that I am, because he already knows anyways, you know, and maybe find a sister or two who's the same way, then all of a sudden it is personal and it becomes powerful and transformational. And that's what we're really here for. You know, it's not about earning a, a, a certain amount of income or having a certain home or, you know, even owning a business or having a title. It's not about any of that, but he gives us these opportunities to travel this journey, but yet we want to get to the finish line so fast. And he's saying, I'm not in a hurry. Why are you in a hurry? Let's just roll up our sleeves and work on the things and do a little today and a little little tomorrow and a little the next day. And we'll have joy in the journey. If we all just take a breath, be real, be honest, and just absorb that we are all going through a growth process, yes. whatever that looks like, and give us each other grace to have that growth season. I was reading in um, Romans yesterday. I was finishing the book of Romans. And um, I like to read in like 
all the different translations. So I, mm -hmm. I have my Bible, but then I also have my app open so I can go, oh, what is it? How do you, how is this explained in other verses? Yeah. And it was the end, it was chapter 16, I think verses 17 through 19, I think. And it was talking about how, the, like the maturity of believers and how when, as, as young believers or just people that have not actually invested in that growth, because just like anything else, you have to invest in that mm -hmm. walk. I yeah. mean, you, you, you basically got a crash course in that because everything else was stripped away. And like you had like, um, an accelerated course in that. Mm, yeah. I mean, really you did. And, yeah. so, but most people they're distracted. They do their devotion, all these things. So, so they have to be so intentional, which is one of the, the main things that we, that I, that I, you know, started this for, because I want to give women the opportunity to grow. But um, it was talking about, um, at, you'll know that you've matured. I'm super paraphrasing. Okay. So don't like send me emails that I was totally off. Um, but basically it was saying that, you know, you'll know that you've matured as a believer when you have the ability to see that and, and to, uh, basically be understanding of those believers that are still young in their faith. Mm -hmm. And they're so naive that they can be moved by people that are not speaking truth. Yeah. And it yeah. really stood out to me in this time. Yeah. I think if people are really are searching, you know, now more than ever for the thing, whatever that is for them. Right. And the people who we want to see maybe turn towards faith and, and see that, you know, that's the thing that they're really looking for, whether they realize it or not, they, they aren't going to do that and wander into a church pew, like a stray cat, you know, they're going to come because they see it in us. But yet if we can't have grace for them yes. to grow and step in, they're never going to come to that because who's going to walk in and say, oh yes, I can act and behave and know and say all the things like a seasoned believer, a seasoned, yes. you know, no way, no way is that going to happen. And yet for me, my passion in all of it is saying, listen, let me show you how, like I've been on both sides of the aisle. I've been on the aisle where I grew up in church and I could tell you everything forwards and backwards and put it in a hymn. And I've also been on the other aisle where people didn't want me in their church anymore because I came with a past. And so let me bridge those two things together and tell you that in the middle, in the middle stands the cross where we all are welcome. Mm. And let's talk about what it means to be welcomed there and accept that. And then how do we get up from that place and then grow in our faith in a way that we're supported and we're learning and that we're surrounded by people who do give us permission, you know, to have that growth. Wow. I mean, that's so powerful. So powerful, Christy. And the, the thing that I like to say now because of all the things that God has walked me through is how do we expect other, other people, people in our own family, our friends, anybody, how do we expect them to believe that there is a God in heaven that loves them unconditionally if they don't experience that with us first? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're it. Yeah. We're, we're it. We are the, the example Mm -hmm. of what a believer is supposed to be. So if we're not showing people the unconditional love that he showed, why would they want to get to know him if we're yeah. the people that are following him? That's exactly right. It's exactly. such a like putting a mirror in front of you moment. Yeah, it's so true. It's so true. We can be the biggest thing that can introduce people to the Lord or the thing that totally turns them off, you know, and that's a big responsibility if you really think about it that. It is. It is a big responsibility. And I think that's why people shy away from it because they're like, well, my life isn't perfect. And I don't do all these things. It's, it has nothing to do with it. If you're listening to that and you're still under that bondage, it has nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. It has to do with the fact that we serve a God that sees us as perfect, knows our past and knows our future, all the mistakes we made in there, then and coming. Mm -hmm. And he sees us as perfect and beautiful. And he loves us no matter what. So, yeah. um, you know, that it why wouldn't you want to why wouldn't you want to follow that why would right. you want to know that guy right <laughs> um so tell tell everybody outside of uh having your course inside of girl power alliance this month like how can people connect with you i know you haven't been out physically speaking this year like you yeah. i'm sure you had so many events canceled yeah. how can they connect with you how can they work with you share all the things 
Sure, sure, sure. So um, my website, christybrowning.com, has a lot of really great resources on there that if you just need to pick me up, that's a great place to land from accessing our podcast to picking up a book to, you know, connecting with us on social media. Um, one of the things that we started this year, and it was kind of cool um, when the pandemic hit because it really made it that much more valuable, but we had a Facebook group that had been a in existence for a while, but to be honest, I hadn't really been doing anything with it. It just was kind of there. And all of a sudden around Christmas time last year, I noticed like we have like 500 women in this group and we aren't doing anything. I think maybe I need to think about this a little bit. And I started praying about it and kind of in my whole thought about like, what does 2020 need to look like? I just felt like I kept being brought back to that group of like, this is a group of ladies that really need to hear from you. And so I made a commitment that Monday through Friday, every morning at 8 a.m., I would go live in that group and I would give them what I was calling their daily dose of vitamin C, C for Christy. And it was just a maybe 10 minute little virtual pick me up motivational thing. Um, and that has been so fun. It has been so much fun. But the thing that's kind of cool about that is I wanted to do it as a speaker because I didn't realize at the time when I agreed to do it that I wasn't going to really be doing a whole lot of right. my speaking elsewhere. But it's crazy to see the women need to have that in the morning. And it really opened my eyes to how much we are bombarded by negativity. And even if we're not like around negative people, but just the weight of the world can yes. be negative regardless. And then you factor in the pandemic and all the domino effect of that. Um, man, was I so glad we started that this year and we were in place before the pandemic hit because it became some people the only way they could get a little bit of good news in their life that day. And, and, you know, we're trying to encourage them to, to be more purpose-filled and, and intentional and giving them little challenges every day of, you know, let's try this today and let's insert this today. Um, and then in May, I think it was, we launched a virtual Bible study group because it's like, we're all sitting at home and none of us can go to church. So right. let's figure this out. And so this year has been so interesting because what was meant to be kind of a, you know, a flat year allowed for me, and I know for a lot of people too, just the chance to kind of open up to maybe something you would never have done otherwise. And so that has been so much fun. I've been doing a lot sitting in this office, sitting in this chair this year, but you know, the spirit transpires no matter how we're connecting, whether it's by phone or by Zoom or in person. And it's been really beautiful to see people get what they need, how they need it, when they need it, and to just be a part of that. I mean, I know I'm not always everyone's single source of, you know, a faith component or a motivational component, but it's always an honor just to be in, in their toolbox as one of the tools that they can go to. And we've really been able to, to kind of expand that a little this year because we weren't traveling, you know, I wasn't speaking and going all over the place. So that's been kind of fun. It's actually been really nice. That's awesome. So. Um, we'll make sure that all the information to connect with her is in the show notes. If you're listening to the podcast, if you're watching this video, it'll be right below in all of the details about the video and um, reach out, connect, get your daily dose of vitamin C. You have, you have um, overcome a ton. You have used it for the glory of God. And I know you're not done yet. There's a lot more coming. And I'm certain that this year, even though it looked different than we all thought, I'm sure that it's just adding to your toolbox so that next year when, hopefully, when everything <laughs> is like back to normal and you're able to go out into the world that you're armed with even more, you know, tools to, to go out there and impact people. And I just thank you for um, being part of what we're doing here at Girl Power Alliance. And I just thank you for your vulnerability and your courage and your honesty. Oh, well, thank you. And I really have loved seeing all that Girl Power Alliance is doing. And I just champion that movement. And, um, you know, people just need to keep getting in, getting in the water, getting wet. And it's all going to benefit them when they, you know, invest in that and do that for themselves. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. Thank you.